They're harassing the people in the neighborhoods. There's one EPS up ahead. They has somebody pulled over at 10. And this is almost every day. Estamos impulsando a la comunidad a que ejerzan el derecho de grabar a un oficial público haciendo su trabajo en público. Como vivimos en una comunidad de estados migratorios mixtos, siempre existe el riesgo de la colaboración con los agentes federales y lo que pudiera ser una simple parada por una infracción de tránsito puede terminar en una deportación de uno de los miembros de nuestra comunidad. Since 2003, Border Patrol have killed, I think, something like 97 to 100 people. That includes children. ICE, their success is, is contingent on secrecy. Their success is contingent on no transparency. The law is you have the right to film police officers in a public space. Obviously, stakes are really high with filming police, but I'd argue that they're even higher with filming ICE or Border Patrol. This past year, we've been getting more calls from folks at the border about how dire the situation is. It's crucial that stories from the ground are seen and heard because this administration really has a strong hold on the narrative coming out of the border. Democrats in Congress have refused to acknowledge the crisis and they have refused to provide our brave border agents with the tools they desperately need to protect our families and our nation. Recently, we've had a lot of ICE agents come in, but they stop random people. They'll stop you because you're passing by, or they'll stop you because you look suspicious to them. And to them, looking suspicious is like us having tattoos, us being, you know, just a brown color. I'm gonna try to stop you, uh, send a border patrol agent over here. Y actualmente como organizadora estoy entrenando a la comunidad con una aplicación que la Unión Americana por las Libertades Civiles está ofreciendo como una herramienta para grabar las interacciones que la comunidad está pasando con las agencias de ley. I live here all my life, never live somewhere else. And I've seen a lot of changes, especially with the wall, border patrol. They're stopping everybody they can with a little infraction. Sometimes they're not true. I take my daughter to school every morning. That's where I see a lot of stops. Entonces, nos han estado militarizando gradualmente, poco a poco, al grado de que la comunidad asume que es necesario tener tantos agentes patrullándonos. Migracam en notificar a tres personas de que haya a, previamente establecido en la aplicación y un video en donde está sucediendo la interacción con la policía. Entonces la finalidad de la Migracam es darle herramientas a la comunidad en estar preparados y saber cómo apoyar a las personas que en ese momento pueden estar en riesgo de ser eh, arrestadas o referidas con la patrulla fronteriza. Muchas personas han sido asesinadas por agencias de ley y han sido expuestas eh, en, los, en los medios sociales. Today we're going to be focusing on how you can use video, so just your cell phone camera, to expose abuses against immigrant communities and then use that footage to fight deportations and also for advocacy. In May of this past year, a 20-year-old woman from Guatemala named Claudia Gonzalez was actually crossing into the U.S. when she was shot and killed by a Border Patrol agent in Laredo, Texas. And a woman named Martha Martinez, who was a neighbor, she lived right next door to the scene of the shooting, she heard the gunshot, she came outside and immediately pressed record and started live streaming the aftermath. 
But what was important about that, even though she didn't film the actual murder, that footage went viral and it brought attention to what had happened. So we're gonna do this in English. <laughs> Lo siento. So my name is Polly. I'm a media activist and I work at an organization called Witness. Witness is an international human rights organization and we work to support and train activists, directly impacted communities, to use video documentation, often just using cell phone cameras, to document abuses and then use that video for evidence and for advocacy campaigns. There's been these different stories that have really been catapulted by visuals. After Mike Brown, after the movement for Black Lives really took root here in the country, I started to see the role that this documentation can play in actually not only telling a fuller story of what's happening, but actually being able to galvanize movements and support and organizing strategies. Come on, the bus! Come on, the bus! In 2014, the number of cell phones actually exceeded the human population. That means there's so many people with the opportunity to use just the camera that you hold in your hand every day to actually create some sort of justice and expose abuses. The way that ICE operates and the way that police operate is incredibly different. ICE, their success is, is contingent on secrecy. Their success is contingent on no transparency. All of these manipulative tactics are purposeful. And we want them to come in legally. Trump had announced his new widened deportation net. They were going to be going after immigrants who are not just, quote unquote, violent criminals, but, but anyone who was in the country without proper documentation. <laughs> Romulo Valica Gonzalez, who's lived in the United States for over 25 years, was pulled over by ICE. They were in unidentified cars. They were wearing vests that only said police on them. And his 13-year-old daughter, in the midst of watching her father being taken away from her, grabbed her cell phone and she filmed the entire incident. And that footage ended up going viral and garnering a ton of support for not only his family, but also bringing to light the human face, the human impact of what these devastating policies look like. We can read about them, we can get upset about them, and then we actually watch a father who is just dropping his daughter off at school get pulled away from the car in front of her eyes and it hits us. It becomes real. Because of that footage, they were actually able to get Romeo out of detention and he's back with his family for now. Since 2003, Border Patrol have killed something like 97 to 100 people. That includes children who have been shot and killed or just killed by Border Patrol. It's essentially like a military occupying force in these communities. These are people who are fleeing situations of political, economic unrest. They're just looking for a better life for themselves and for their community and for their children. There's one. EPS up ahead, it has somebody pulled over it then. And this is almost every day. Estamos impulsando a la comunidad a que ejerzan el derecho de grabar a un oficial público haciendo su trabajo en público. Como vivimos en una comunidad de estados migratorios mixtos, siempre existe el riesgo de la colaboración con los agentes federales y lo que pudiera ser una simple parada por una infracción de tránsito puede terminar en una deportación de uno de los miembros de nuestra comunidad. ¿Otro? Sí. Yeah. Teenagers. Teenagers. Milagro que no ha llegado por Pachón, porque siempre llegan uh -huh. atrás de ellos. Nuestra comunidad no está acostumbrada a filmar a los agentes de ley haciendo su trabajo. Asumen que no deberían de hacerlo. Entonces, parte de mi trabajo es eh, informarles que es un derecho constitucional, que son agentes públicos. Hi, Michelle. Rolando. And Maria. Uh, so is there any questions or anything that you guys have? Uh, I think that's uh, like a harassment, harassing the neighborhood mm -hmm. to me. But so what's what's your question? One of my troopers made a traffic stop for, mm -hmm. I'm not sure of the violation right now. Uh, but 
in the interview or whatever, we found out that there was uh, two people, the driver didn't know who they were, and then we knew there was two more in the back just laying down. So we were not allowed to stop cars just because we see somebody and we think they're illegal, right? They yeah. have to commit an infraction, right? Yes. We have to have probable cause yes. to stop a vehicle. Now, once we stop a vehicle, uh, it's our duty to to see what's going on and, and, and to make sure that nothing illegal is going on in that car. Yeah. It, it's not our intent to just stop people just to see if they're legal or illegal. Okay, that's not what we do on here. They call the Border Patrol and they arrested the driver, the passenger, and the other guys. A lot of people are already inclined to grab their phone and start filming, but not all those videos lead to justice, whether that's justice in the courtroom, whether it's fighting a deportation, or whether it's galvanizing public advocacy. And so that's why we do these trainings, to help ensure that what you are filming is actually leading to some impact. I think that we are a society that our empathy sometimes is contingent on human faces, on human voices. Best case scenario would be to try to get that footage to the family of the person who you documented. If you don't have secure immigration status, that might be a reason why you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you are interacting with a police officer or border patrol agent have someone who has secure citizenship be the person who is going to stand closest to the ICE officer and do the filming. In order to paint a full story of what's actually happening at the border, these stories from these organizers and these communities need to be heard. We can't advocate for inclusive policy. We can't advocate against inhumane racist policy unless there is a clear picture of what's happening at the border. And without visual and audio documentation, we would have no idea what's happening.